All right, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us for another day of seminars with the USAWKF. Our next presenter is Kenny Perez, who will be teaching us rope dart. Uh, Kenny Perez is head instructor of dynamic martial arts in Phoenix, Arizona. He's one of the first Americans to practice and compete in Wushu in mainland China in the 1980s. He's also been an actor and a stuntman in several Hong Kong films alongside Donnie Yen. And he's known for his specialty in what are considered exotic weapons, including the flying fork, meteor hammer, and rope dart, which he'll be teaching us today. Uh, without further ado, this is Kenny Perez. All right. Hey, thank you, Brandon. I hope you can all hear me out there. Um, it's a special day for me just to be part of this uh, group of exciting people and instructors. Uh, he gave a bit of my background. So basically, we're just going to jump into what the class is about. And uh, some of you might be beginners. Some of you maybe never tried working the rope dart or the meteor hammer. Or maybe some of you are more experienced. You know, I know there's also a group of uh, float artists out there who, who like to spin their, their weapon more like uh, performances in the shows and uh, street performers. Uh, very exciting stuff. Um, the rope dart is another from the traditional weapons class. It's, um, you know, the history of the rope dart itself is kind of like everything else, not really written down and in solid, you know, uh, solid concrete evidence to specific history. But, uh, you know, it kind of evolved and uh, developed out of uh, entertainment as well as like the bolo or um, the lasso, you know, and also the chain mace, which they used a stick with a chain and a heavy hammer ball at the end of it to smack people around. Um, it was just like a, a crowd controller for a slave controller back in the days too. And then somehow, you know, it evolved like other weapons and it became a weapon of uh, self-defense and also a weapon of entertainment when, you know, the, the, the tide shifted and modern arms came out and everything else, the wushu became more of an in, entertainment and a sport, you know, so did the rope dart uh, and meteor hammer. You know, I keep saying rope dart and meteor hammer, and I like to explain that too. The rope dart is usually like pointed, like the ones here on the top row. These are rope darts. They're usually like uh, daggers, you know, maybe knives. Um, sometimes they're called like uh, flying weights. You know, there's different ones like, I don't know if you can see this one over here called the flying lotus. But um, those are pointed and they're like a, a stabbing weapon as compared to the meteor hammers, which are like the second row of meteor hammers. And those are a little bit uh, more heavy and blunt and round. Uh, maybe not so blunt if it's more like a mace or a spike ball. But um, the difference being uh, the mace was probably more used more in the battlefield because it was swinging and smashing horizontally or vertically, and you could keep going and going and just crack heads or whatever, you know. As compared to the dart, it would, you could swing it so many times, but it's mainly meant for sticking and stabbing, and you could do that a few times. You'd have to retract it and do it again, but I believe you have more versatility by using a, a mace or a hammer. Um, but the people ask, well, how long is the rope supposed to be? And that's personal preference. Uh, the gauge they use now, or if you want to say officially, is maybe twice your arm's length. So you can't see me up here and here, but I'm just going to step back in a second. But twice your arm's length, so the rope folded across as your arms are spanned out in front of your chest horizontally. And uh, again, it's personal preference because sometimes the darts or hammers were maybe up to 15, 15 feet long. You know, the weight of the dart or hammer depends, again, on what you're working with or what your preference is. Uh, some of these uh, darts are pretty heavy, you know. Um, you can't tell, but this is pretty solid. And some of these, uh, this one is, you know, pretty lightweight, quicker, quicker. Okay. Now, when you work the uh, rope dart, uh, you create speed by circling it. So one of the four main things about working a rope dart or a meter hammer is circling is one of the main uh, techniques. The second also thing that's uh, technique would be um, wrapping the body, body wraps. And that's where the artistic flavor comes in. And the other two are smashing or stabbing. So those four things are the basis of the meter hammer rope dart, smashing, stabbing, circling, and wrapping. And so when you, when you practice these weapons, you can practice all four of those specific techniques if you're practicing smashing, you might have a target. You shoot your dart out and smashing, trying to hit your target. If you're practicing stabbing, you might be popping your dart out, trying to stick it into a target. Uh, circles are all kinds of circles. Like, uh, you know, wushu athletes are great at spinning and turning, just wrapping your body. Again, the, wrapping, the wraps are part of it, too. And so we're going to kind of cover some of that today. And what I did was I broke it down to a simplified routine, which is actually a generalized routine that was uh, uh, publicized in the late... Uh, 
late 80s, 90s. And it was a book given out um, in the Wushu series, which you, I don't know, if I'm sure they still saw it on Amazon, but it's by Li Shudong, and it's called Soft Weapon, Nine Section, and Rope Dart. And this weapon, uh, this book is pretty good, and it's well explained, but in the back, there's a 10, 10 uh, technique rope dart routine. So I thought, you know, instead of just going out in some, my own direction, I try and stay with something that everybody could resource, find the book if they need to, and have this to back it up later on. You know, also I put on YouTube a reference video of the same routine we're gonna go through today, all right? But I guess we're gonna have to start with the basics. Later on, you know, if you have questions or during the session, if you have questions, Brandon can cue me and I'll try and answer those questions as we go through the class. But hopefully uh, you might've seen that I put up some posts about how to make a rope dart, if you don't have one, a practice dart. And hopefully you guys spent the time, if you're here already, I'm not sure how many people are out there, but you have your practice dart or your real dart. Today I'm using the uh, hammer, but um, the way to make those is like maybe a little sand, a sandbag. Sometimes those, those, those chest weights, vest that you wear for building up your legs, have little sandbag weights. You take one of those and put it on a rope, tape it down. Uh, you can get like a rubber ball or a tennis ball or some kind of little ball that's not gonna hurt you. Um, also, some people could get like a, a jump rope. If you don't have anything, grab the jump rope, right? Maybe you got a, something you could wrap onto a string real quick, like a pen or something heavy. Uh, also, uh, I thought like those little plastic, tiny water bottles, pour out the water, fill it with sand as much as you want, drive the, the rope through it how you can, and um, there you have a practice dart. So I'm not sure what you did to get here, but hopefully everybody's prepared with their dart. If not, you know, this is also going out on YouTube and it's gonna be in a file where you can pick it up again later. So if you wanna watch it and come back and with your weapon and try it out, that's great too. So with the USA WKF, they gave you a lot of venues to try and improve on this particular weapon. And I know it's an obscure weapon, and it's kind of a hard weapon. And of course, you know, if you practice it, you know how hard it is because there's only one way to learn and get good is, you know, you beat yourself a few times and you learn not to beat yourself. But uh, you know, hey, I'm okay. So, so here we go. Let me move this out of the way, but um, I'm just gonna move this so we have more of a practice area back here. So I might leave the screen, but bear with me. I'm still here. All right, ta-da, the magic of Hollywood. All right, so. Different darts, different weapons, right? Maybe you have a dart. Maybe you don't. Maybe you have a hammer. Maybe that's your preference. Uh, I don't even know. Maybe you're one of those really crazy people, you know, 50 shades of wushu. Maybe you have a claw. All right. But we're just going to go ahead and practice. I have my own hammer right here. And uh, like I said before, as you start practicing the rope dart, am I good? Is this good? I just want to make sure I'm not getting blurred or anything. Twice your shoulder, uh, twice your arm span by holding out in front of your chest. How did I put it on my wrist? Well, this is a, like a little loop. And you push the string through the loop. Then you have a slide, like a little slide loop. Lasso noose, or what you want to call it. And you can tighten it. Okay. So there, that's my anchor. It's not going to slip and slide because it's pulled tight against the friction also. All right, so this is how you control. This is your anchor hand. This is your control hand. Okay. Now, when you uh, hold the dart, you might want to carry some of the extra rope in your left hand like this. Okay. Some, some people like to wrap it tight one time and then carry an extra piece or few like this. Right. And you're holding the dart or the hammer. I might keep saying, saying dart, so forgive me if I'm holding a hammer and I say dart, but uh, uh, this is, we're going to keep going. So how are you holding it in your right hand? Well, hey, it's personal preference. Some people like to hold it palm down with the pinky towards the dart. Some people like to hold it palm up with the big finger or thumb towards the dart. I prefer the pinky because when I'm drawing forward figure eights, my palm is down just like this. Okay. So here's my forward circle. All right. So once again, I said the length is twice the span of your arm reach, uh, right, out like this. Another way of gauging it is expanding it out and letting the dart barely or around touching the ground. This is another way of gauging the length of the dart. Okay, but like I said, some people like them longer. Some people like them shorter. You know, if, if it's not the right size, you're trying some moves, you might not have enough rope to do the wraps you wanna do, so it might have to be longer. 
uh, you know, be careful. You don't want to bust some teeth out, uh, knock the heads or whatever. Okay, I'd advise you if you feel like it, <laughs> you're just a beginner, maybe have some head gear on, but uh, we're going to keep on moving. All right, so the dart is projected out forward, projected out forward. And you've got to, wherever you point your hand, well, that's more or less where the dart's going to go in, depending on the trajectory of your swing. So if I'm trying to hit somebody in front of me, I'm going like that, right? Same from the side. You can see from the side, it's the same thing, no matter left or right, left or right. And I give it a little slide to get more distance. I can shoot at distance. I can give it more distance if I slide it further. Uh, you can't tell from this angle, but it's going further, maybe about, you know, it's 10, 12 feet. Okay, so this is me holding in. This is how we're holding it. You guys with me? I hope you're with me because we're going to keep going. All right, so this is a simple things you have to remember. Sometimes you have to practice the simple things over and over to get good at them because even in Wushu, the most complex, cool combinations are simple basics, right? Done at a stellar level. All right, so just uh, projecting it, like I showed you a second ago, you might project it to your right, which is back behind you, or you might project it forward, right? Back or forward. This is called, you know, sweeping back. This is called snake spits his tongue, right? Sweeping back, snake spits his tongue, if you want the uh, classical poetic names. In other words, it's just shoot right, shoot left, shoot right, shoot left. And I'm not sure, maybe on your screen I look backwards, maybe... My right is your left, or so, but we'll just keep going. All right, so just getting used to this like this, right? You can stand here, maybe which leg you want to get in front. Practice either leg in front. You might practice like this. Left leg in front, shooting right and left. Or you might practice right leg in front, shooting right, right and left, right? Once you become comfortable with that, once you become comfortable with just shooting it, you know, you can, oh, well, I might as well add this one in also. You can shoot right and left, or you can shoot straight up. You know, sometimes they shoot straight up in a wushu. Of course, you can't see that happening there, but sometimes they might go and shoot up, right? I don't know what the stomp's about. But um, right, left, up, down. Well, you know, every time you're doing a figure eight, you're sm smashing, you're failing. So if that was someone's head right there, you'd be like, crack, right? And, you know, I put a few videos on my, I have a training video with some of these smashing moves, like the crack coconuts. But that's one way to gauge your, your power when you're smashing four figure eights. So here we go. That was shooting. And then the second thing is circles and figure eights. So I'm facing you guys. I'm standing sideways, just like we do with other wushu weapons, right? You don't want to stand like a boxer and do this because your, your knees are further out. You might crack your knees. Again, there's less of you to see if you're standing sideways also. So as you draw circles in front on the right side, on the left side, this is a basic movement. Left and right, right and left, right, left. And when you do right and left, it becomes what? What? A figure eight. So forward figure eight. Right. Let me just do this sideways now. My right leg's in front as I'm drawing forward circles on my right side behind my back. Left side, forward circle. Again, try and keep it straight up and down. Keep the trajectory of the circle vertical as much as you can. You don't want it to be too wobbly wide like an X circle. Okay, but when you do figure eight, it is making a drawing a little X, but it's very straight up and down. Close to your legs, close to your legs without cracking them. Right? So this is what it looks like from the side. Right? And then if I'm shooting it, maybe I'm shooting it that way. Right? Maybe I'm shooting it that way which if you see here, forward circle, forward figure eight becomes reverse circle, reverse circle, or reverse figure eight. So here it is, basic move number two, forward figure eight, reverse figure eight. Okay, if you have any experience with other wushu weapons, let's say the chain whip, sometimes those movements kind of absorb into the rope dart. And the one I was specifically thinking of at the moment is carrying it over your shoulder. So sometimes I might go like this, and maybe I want to turn direction. I might just kind of carry my shoulder and turn it this way, right? So if I turn my shoulder, carry it this way, right? Turn my shoulder, carry it this way. Turn my shoulder, carry it this way. So sometimes you carry it over your shoulder, right? Maybe it's like this one. Two, three. One, two, 
three. Okay. So on my right shoulder, I'm carrying it. Let me show you from this side. One, two, three. Okay. Sometimes you learn this with a chain whip. Okay. So this movement is absorbed into the rope dart. So that was a forward figure eight. All about forward figure eights. Still. Forward figure eights. So get comfortable doing forward figure eights. Forward figure eights. So stepping, turning, reverse figure eight, stepping, turning, 360 turning over, right? 360 turning over, left or right. Left or right. The beauty of this, the beauty of this program is you can go back and try maybe again after later on when or maybe I'm throwing too much out there for you, but all it is is figure eights and body turns, forward or reverse, right and left, okay? So you have to understand figure eights, left and right, forward and reverse, to move on to the other um, movements of the weapon. And I know some of you are like, I got this, come on, move on, show me something good. Okay, we'll get there. We're just doing it, you know, the art of the dart, 101. All right, so we are gonna move on though. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you shoot it, right? You shoot it, and the basic, most basic that everybody practices first is probably an elbow pop or an elbow wrap, right? So if I'm drawing a forward circle, I'm gonna shoot behind towards the opposite direction by wrapping my elbow this way. One wrap and push, okay? Let me come up. One wrap and push, right? One wrap and push. And my aim is probably about my chest to head height here, right? Chest to head height. I could possibly probably go lower if I wanted to. And again, like I said, you go higher if you want to, but practice shooting about body height. Someone, if you're fighting with a rope dart, which I hopefully, you know, you don't, you're not fighting with a rope dart. If you are, your aim is someone about your height, you're not too, tall, not too much taller, not like Kareem, okay, or Shaq. Okay, here we go. Push to the right, right? Forward circle, push to the right. Okay, that's called the golden thread wraps the arm. Golden thread wraps the arm one direction and then reverse the circle. So after you shoot to the right off the forward circle, shoot to the right, the rope reverses, the, the hammer reverses, now you're drawing a reverse circle. You continue, continuity is your friend here, continue with the continuity and wrap under the elbow now like this. And then what you do is push your elbow and point your elbow where the, where you want your dart to be released. So I point my elbow and the dart shoots out in that direction. I point my elbow, right? So if I wanted to point somewhere else, you know, it might go somewhere else. You know, if I, it really depends, but it's, it's kind of hard to change the direct tra trajectory with the speed behind it. But usually it's in the zone of your, of your uh, uh, um, advance and retreat, okay? But elbow back, wrap, elbow forward. Right elbow back, wrap right elbow forward. Okay, so we're gonna do the left arm now. So I'm still circling like this. Okay, so if I did right elbow back, reverse the circle, shoot to the left, or right elbow forward, reverse the circle, now I'm gonna use my left elbow and go forward, left elbow forward, reverse the circle, left elbow back. So I'm doing the same thing I did with my right, with my left. Right, close up. Oh, that was a double wrap. Sorry about that. Close up. One, double wrap. Uh oh, it advanced on you. Okay, so under. I'm trying to get you to view my the elbow wrap. Okay, so make it more dramatic. Go. Ah! Right, stamp the foot. Right. So if I'm coming in here, I just kind of. <laughs> maybe stomp that foot to give it more intensity. Okay, that's a big circle. That's a 360 on the wrap here, look. 360, okay. let me stop the dart so we can see. Stop the dart. That's like a 360 wrap. Okay, and then it's going back that way. But you can do half a 180 and shoot it the other way like this. This is good if you're trying to stick a, a rope dart into the target, pop it half a circle, half, half a circle. Okay, there it is. Forward and reverse shooting, right arm, left arm. 
You can do it standing still, or you can do it walking. And the reason I did it like this was because this is turning. This is part of the routine. Okay. I want to show you a leg wrap. So if you're doing this, leg wrap under the right leg, under the left leg, you do this with chain whip. Under the right leg, under the left leg, right? Under the right leg, under the left leg. This can help you turn it. Under the right leg, under the left leg. Hmm, got that? So these are one of the ways of turning your body. You could turn direction here and carry it over your shoulder. Oh, I just added two moves for you. You can turn direction here. Okay. Pop it out that way. So what I've shown you so far, there's a few combinations you could put together to create your little own combinations. And that's the, the fun side of the beauty of the uh, meter hammer is after you learn a lot of basics, people create some great combinations, especially the flow artists. There's all kinds of wraps and continuity moves that they do in front of the leg, behind the leg, the arms and neck, whatever. You know, but we're gonna stick to 10 movements. And these 10 movements are what's in the routine. And this 10 step routine, um, well, it does have a name, but uh, there's 10 movements in within it. And I guess I might be able to put them up on the screen. I don't know if you wanna see you know, the, the name of the routine, but if it's out there. Uh, Kenny, see. I can, uh, I will uh, type it into the chat window so people can see it there. Perfect, okay, Alrighty. all right. Okay, so that was a leg and we did the elbow. I just wanna go over the, the neck and the armpit because those are crucial also. So neck, again, like chain rip, hopefully I don't lose my earbud like this. Oops, I lost my earbud. Okay. And make create a rope dart earbud here. Okay, let's do this again. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Kind of hard to show you here. I might have to take off my earbud for this. So uh, you can neck right this way. Uh, I'm trying not to let it touch my ear. Uh, right, neck wrap, or this way. Uh, I'll do that again for you. Wrap. Right. Just like chain whip, of course. Right, Rock and release, right? And I did it that way and I did it the other way. You can see from the backside, grab and release, all right. Okay, something like that, you might not practice by itself, you know, 10, 20, 5,000 times until you feel comfortable with it because it's gonna come back into play and you don't wanna crack your teeth. But the, the fourth one I was talking about was the armpit. And it usually, it's because it's, it's very um, in woven into a lot of the movements. Under the right armpit, over the left shoulder. Under the, under the right armpit, over the left shoulder. Okay. Under the right armpit, over the left shoulder. So I'll do it a few times this way. Notice I re-gripped it. Under the right armpit. Over the left shoulder, my left arm is like a buffer as I grab it again to control the dart. Because right. if I didn't grab it, it'd come back and crack me somewhere. Right. So once I go over the left shoulder, buffer grab. Right. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. Ten movements. Ten movements. Let me just make sure we got good. Okay, we still got about 35 minutes. 25 minutes? 25 minutes. Good. All right, we're going to learn this routine in 25 minutes. And uh, you guys can, you know, you have it on your phone, you have it on, on YouTube, you have it wherever you need it to review it. Okay. Some of you may want to have your dart daisy chained in a certain way where you kind of do this thing and make a bunch of them and shoot it out. And to do that, you take your first, let me grab one of these darts that was so graciously provided by Wing Lamb. 
Kung Fu supplies. Uh, you take this extra ring, one of the extra rings, and you start lacing your rope through the extra ring. Here I'm lacing it through a little latching, I don't know what they're called, carabiner, something like that. Okay, so, so I put my string or my rope through the first ring or whatever ring you have, right? And then without twisting the rope, you draw another loop and pull that one up through there. And you repeat, oops, I dropped it. Let me get back to it. Okay. And then you repeat and you repeat and you repeat and you repeat. As many times as you like, this is like daisy chain, a daisy chain. Right? Um, if my dart looks a little bit melted, this is also my fire dart. But, uh, Hammer. <laughs> right. Once you do this, you got a daisy chain, it's short in the length. Now you can use it like a chain whip, like a mace, you can flail, you can crack coconuts, whatever you need to do, right? Clear the way, okay? From here, if you want to release it, you shoot it out. And once you shoot it out, it comes off the daisy chain and you're ready to go, right? Uh, let me do this one more time here, okay? All right. Yeah. Right. So here you are. Just hanging out. Hanging out at the club. No, I just want to show you how you can wrap it and conceal it. If I went all the way, of course, I'd loop this really hard. Like this. Maybe, maybe over my shoulder, maybe zigzag. You can come up with different ways of concealing it. Right. And when you're ready to go, you unlock it. Put your hand through, and you got your Jay Z chain, right? And then you just go ahead and shoot it out, and you're good. See that? From concealed to ready for battle. Um, hey, just so you know, just so you know, it's not like you're going to be walking around with rope darts around, or do we? Okay, here we go. If it's daisy chained, you're going to start in a daisy chain. But just for the purpose of moving on, I'm going to start like this. Okay, so the routine starts with the rope anchored, grab some slack, maybe draw some loops. I leave about two feet here. I usually try and hold the dart for a second so I can salute, just like in all wushu forms, you salute, salute, and hands down. Okay, all right. Number one, after you hands down, we're gonna be going in a linear, linear direction. Right? Number one, you take dart and drop. And as you drop, make sure it doesn't loop through your, fall through your loop because then you'll be in a knot. So as it drops, you're ready to go. From here, even if it's a daisy chain, you start like this. From here, you circle, stop, step, and shoot it out. Okay? So, salute, drop, here, circle, stop, step, shoot it out. Okay? Salute, step, circle, stop, step, shoot it out. Now I'm in a forward circle, forward figure. Here I go. I'm coming at you. I'm coming at you. The first move you're going to do after you shoot it out, stop, step, shoot out. The left foot, here we go, in step, wrap. This is called the prodigal, uh, prodigal plays with the ball. I was confused between that one and the other one. Here it is, technique number one, wrap and kick. Okay. Shooting out towards your left, wrap and kick. In step, wrap, and kick. In step, wrap, and kick. Just one time. I'm just reviewing it, repeating it for you, right? Because if you want to get skilled at this, you might have to do 100 of these over and over again. And just, you know. Or the second move after the wrap and kick is instead of the in step, it's the ball of the foot push kick. Kick. Ball of the foot push. Ball of the foot push kick. Ball of the foot push kick. Ball of the foot push kick. Right? So it's one, two. Of course, you're, you're advancing as you do this. You're going one step, two step, three step, maybe four. And we're going to do, we'll do two. Okay. Again, what I'm showing you, uh, the video, a reference video is available on YouTube. And uh, just look for it under Kenny Perez. Here it is again. Shoot it out. One. Pull back. Draw your circles or your figure eight. Advance left foot in step kick one. 
That's in step kick, kick two. Okay, that's called prodigal plays with the ball. All right, just for the purpose of showing you sideways. After you salute, drop, circle, stomp, shoot. Step up, draw your circles, here you come. Left instep kick, that didn't work very well. Try to get left instep kick, right, ball the foot kick. Left instep kick, right, ball the foot kick. Next move after the right ball the foot kick, after the right ball the foot kick, you let the wrap the dart or ball under the right armpit over the left shoulder like we did a second ago. Boom, buffer catch on your left forearm. But you don't stop, you continue, you connect, you grab it, and you're holding it again like this. After you grab it with your right hand, it goes over your left shoulder, you check it with your left forearm and grab it as it comes in to draw a forward circle or forward figure eight. Now, your left hand reaches towards the rope because you're gonna peel the rope off you. You're gonna peel the rope away so you can shoot it and release it. So, left kick, right kick, over the left shoulder, buffer, grab, peel as you turn. Circle, turn, peel, shoot. Step back a little bit. Shoot over the left shoulder, buffer, grab in the right hand. You don't have to stand here, you can just continue through. Circle, turn, peel, shoot. Okay, again, let me do it this way. Shoot it out, Boom. Left in step kick, right, all the foot kick, shoot. Grab, circle, turn, shoot. Okay. If you wanna get fancy, if you wanna get fancy, then you start adding little extra turns, a couple extra turns. So if I was to go one, left, right, shoot, maybe I go turn, 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 peel, shoot. Right? And then of course I had a little bit of stompiness in there, give it intensity as I lost my earbud. It's gonna be the hard thing in here, but we'll keep going. Okay. So after I shot over my shoulder, I'll do an angle for you. Over my shoulder, grab, I could run, turn, turn. Or, yeah. Turn, jump, turn. Right? Jump, turn, spin, kill, kick, or shoot. Right? Shoot. Okay. That's technique number. Where are we at here, Brandon? Technique number after plays the ball, it is boat pushes the current. The current pushes the boat. Is that move I just did? So, prodigal plays with the ball, where's the two kicks? And then the second move was uh, the current pushes the boat, right? So technique number two, current push the boat. Shoot back towards your right, the direction you came from. All right, technique number two. Okay, then you connect it to the next piece we already did. It's called the golden thread or the golden twine wraps the arm. And we're gonna do four, one, two, three, four, five. We're gonna do five. So let me go from the beginning. After I shoot and left kick and right kick and run at you, ah, and then maybe I spin and jump and turn, and I peel it away and shoot it back the other way. Here, look at, I'm facing the opposite side. Um, I pulled it back and now I'm drawing a forward circle on the left side of my body. I'm still standing sideways. I'm still in the same line from here. I'm gonna turn, do an elbow wrap with my right arm, shoot. I'll do this in the opposite side here, shoot. So after I, after I peel and shoot, I come here, one, two, shoot. Right? One, two, shoot. I'll just connect it for you one more time, then I'll move along. One, two, peel, the boat pushes, the, I mean the current pushes the boat, then the golden twine wraps the arm. One. I'm gonna do four more, two on the right and two on the left arm. So right is one. Left, I mean right again two. Now left, 
one, and then left, two. Okay, so shoot, turn, peel, shoot. Here, draw four, circle, one. Step, four, circle, two. Turn, four, circle, three. The other arm, I mean, same, four. It was right, right, left, left. Okay, right, right, left, and left. You guys with me? You guys with me? We're with you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. All right. So it's four shots. I'm going to add one more, and it's just a quick uh, sh uh, foot switch on the fifth one. Okay. So after I current pulls the boat, pop. Golden twine wraps the arm right. Golden twine keeps wrapping the arm again left. Keeps wrapping the arm left. And the five, I switch. Five, I switch my feet here. Boom. Or if I'm this way. Boom. Yeah. Just to, for the dramatic effect, right? From here. Uh oh, is that called a gumbu? You know, maybe you want to make it really nice. Drop in deep. One, two. Boom. I'm there. Okay. So that's five. Right, right, left, left, right. Like the first one. So five is like number the first one. So after golden twine wraps the arm, we're gonna to go to, I believe, uh, prodigal kicks the ball. The prodigal kicks the ball. Uh, technique numero cuatro. All right, prodigal kicks the ball. So let's go again. Boat pushes the current. I always said it backwards. Current pushes the boat. Golden twine wraps the arm. Four, two, three. Four, five, okay. Golden uh, prodigal kicks the ball. Here is that under leg we talked about. Under leg, the slight turn of the body. But as you go under your leg, with that slight turn of the body, you re-grip your right hand, let go, and re-grip on the outside. It has to be continuous, no stop, because momentum is the, the momentum is behind the rope. So you don't want to stop the rope, right? So once it goes under, you keep circling. There's no break in the circle. So it goes under the inside of the thigh, under the inside of the right leg. One. Okay, and the next part is under and around the, the shin. Under and around the shin, right? So it kind of looks like this, but I really can't stop because it can't be this tight, it'll just stick to my leg. So it has to be fluid, but I'm just showing you what it looks like. One, two, I'm gonna push it off that way. So I'm gonna push it off the other direction. So if my last golden twine wraps arm was that way, then I go under my right leg, re-grip, under my right leg again, turn, and really, release. under my right leg, re-grip, under my right leg, turn and release. I'll just do it for you, forward towards you. Under my right leg, re-grip. Under my right leg, shoot. Under my right leg, re-grip. Under my right leg, shoot. Should I do it this way? One, two, three. Well, I guess if I do it this way, maybe. One, I don't know if it's gonna help you any. Two, three. The prodigal plays with the ball. One, two, three. Okay. One, two, three. Maybe, maybe you can go higher, or point your leg. Okay. Maybe you got this angle. Okay. The prodigal plays with the ball. That's technique number five or four. All right. The next one is called hang the cross on the back. Hang the red cross on the back. Okay. Really hard to translate, but I call it a wrap from the waist. And it's kind of complex, so let's do this one. This, there's two that are kind of complex. This is the first one. So let's see if we can get through this. Just for reference, kick was one, two, shoot over the shoulder. The boat pulls the current. Boom. All right. Golden twine wraps the arm. One, 
two, three, four, five. And prodigal kicks the ball. Pop. Now, as it shoots out after the kick, I bring it back the other way, but raise my hands up. And notice I regrip it like this. From it's really hard to explain. From here, as it as the pendulum swings back, I grab it from the other side. So I look like this. Instead of looking like this, I reach and grab it from the other side. So my right palm is facing backwards. I'm gonna pull it behind. So now it's behind my armpit, but I say my waist, and again over the left shoulder. Okay, so after prodigal kicks, plays the ball, you go like this, one, grab. Now I give it the slack and take the slack over. I grab from in front here, my left hand grabs the rope inside my right arm. See this? Behind the back, over the shoulder, left hand grabs the rope. Now, Let's turn into the circle. This thumb is holding the rope here. And I shoot it over my shoulder again. From my right pit, armpit over my left shoulder again. See that? So difficult, right? Let me just back it up for you so you can see it close up. Let me show you close up here. Okay. Close up, I shot it, I did the kick, and as it came back, I switched my grip, pulled it behind my shoulder, give all the slack out that direction, and grab it with my right hand. Continue circling that direction, and put it behind my armpit and over my neck again. Behind my armpit, over my neck. And once it's there, once it's there, I'm gonna grab the, the rope again. So there's a loop here, there's gonna be another loop now. Grab the rope here. here. And I'm gonna push it here. Get that. It went under my right arm, under my left arm here. So I shot it back over. And then Shoot it out. So we do this again. After Prodigal kicks the ball, I shoot it back this way, pull it behind my arms, and my neck, tuck the slack. One, two, three, four. Uh oh. Pound. Release. So one, two, three. Oh, oh, wait. Oh. <laughs> Okay, let's see this. Let's do this again. See that? How did I get there? Oh, I have to explain that again. It's hard to do a slow. Let's start again. After I kicked it forward, boom, pull it up over my head, regrip, pull it back behind my waist, boom, shoot it behind my back, grab it under my armpit. That was a mistake I told you. So now I grab it under my armpit, after over my shoulder. I went behind my back, of course I grabbed it. Behind my back, I grabbed it under my armpit. Grab. So I got it like this. And I grabbed it under my armpit, then carried it over my right shoulder. Oh. This is hanging the cross on your back. Hanging the cross on your back. Not to be confused with. Erlang moves the mountain, which is a cross around the elbows. This is a cross around the body. And then shoot. Pump. So let's do it from the beginning in, in fluidity so you can see. Kick one, kick two, shoot it. Now we're going to do the current pulls the boat. Pop, pull it back. Now we're doing the golden twine wraps the arm actually five times. Twice on the right, twice on the left, and once more on the right. Pop. Okay, then 
prodigal plays with the ball, pop or kicks the ball, right? Okay, and then I said, behind, switch grip, tuck it behind the waist, right waist, left to the left waist, right waist to left waist, and then back up over the shoulder, catch, and then shoot. Pound. Okay. Okay. Now let's move on. Oh my gosh. We're going to kill this form right now. Okay. After I do prodigal kicks the ball and cross on the back, next one is under the C. So let's just do this again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You know this one? Okay. Maybe some of you are like, butterfly, but in the form, it's not there yet. I have to catch it here. You shoot, boom. Draw a forward circle. This is where in your ma boo, ma bizzle, under the leg. This is called yasha searches the sea. Yasha searches the sea. But you're gonna catch it behind you. Instead of going like this, you're gonna go one, two, three, catch, kick. Shoestring. Three, catch, kick. Okay. Under the leg, scoop kick. Under the leg, scoop kick. Under the inside of the right leg, circle, scoop kick. Okay. Under the right leg, scoop kick. Okay. So go back to that last move. Hang the cross on the back. Ooh. Pop, turn, shoot. Right? Yasha searches the C and the leg scoop kick. It could be a Mabu if you'd like. All right, Mabu scoop kick. I don't really like the Mabu because it breaks the fluidity, but it's in there. Okay? So just one, two, three, four. Oops, three, four, kick. Your Mabu, Mabu looks like this. Three, four, Kick. He's catching my shoestrings. Maybe without the mabu, right? You kick wherever you have kick points. That's where your dart's gonna go. If you wanna go higher, aim higher. Yasha searches the sea. All right, early on crosses the mountain. Here's a back double elbow cross. We're gonna go through this one kind of quick. After you kick, You go in front, behind, let it hook over the top of the left elbow, and then back in the other direction. And as it swings pendulum back, it goes to the top of the right elbow. This is all happening behind your back. Once you get here, you draw the circle and shoot it off. Okay? So after early on, after Yasha searches the C, kick, I'm gonna turn, and here's my elbow. Over the top left elbow, over the top the right elbow, turn and push. Okay. After Yesha searches the C, kick and the turn, shoot it out from the right side, let it pendulum swing over the left arm, right arm, and shoot it out. Right? Last time. Yesha searches the C. Over the left arm, over the right arm, turn and shoot. Very long moves them out in. Early on moves the mountain is double cross elbow behind the back. Okay. Last one is a tricky one. See so if we can get it. We're gonna do this kind of quick too, but again, reference the video later. This is called 100 birds rise to greet the phoenix. 100 birds soar to greet the phoenix. Okay, so from here, you're gonna shoot over your right shoulder again, catch it. Once you got your right hand, you're gonna do a walk forward with your right foot and let it do like Wrap and circle under your armpit like this. Circle in your armpit and turn direction. Kind of like, like when you do a chain whip, you go like this. Right? Chain whip. Move. So you're just going to do it from, from after you catch it. You can go step forward one time. Now when you go back the other way, two, like a chain whip, you let it connect over your right elbow, three, and catch it. But it's still circling. So I caught it. Now this is the trick. You're gonna let it lay over your right neck, over the right side of your neck. I hope my, uh, I don't leave my head buds, earbuds. And you're gonna release it by turning away. Over the right neck, release it and turn away. Ooh, did you see that? 
Okay, so over the left shoulder, chain whip left, chain whip right, left wrap, neck, turn, shoot. Ooh, slow down. I don't know if you have the capability. Left, side, right side, around, regrip, neck, turn, shoot, right? So one, one, two, three, four, turn, shoot, five. And that is called 100 birds rise to greet the phoenix. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna finish up so we can review it. Let's see, I got time. Uh -oh. You're good, last you move. a few more minutes, a few more minutes, Kenny, you got this. Okay, okay. last move is called uh, immortal pointing the way. So after I did the uh, rise to greet the phoenix, after this move, rise to greet the phoenix, three, four, pop. Then Immortal uh, points the way. I'm going to go one and re-grab under my right armpit and over my right arm. Then go to my left side. If I do that, I'm going to turn away. Left side. I caught it with my fingers. Right side, left side. Turn away. Hobu, on guard. Right. Shoot. Ha! Okay. So right arm only. Right arm under and over, boom. Left arm under and over, catch, turn. Oops, well, I missed my catch. Again, right arm only, left arm, turn, catch, shoot. After you shoot, you can let it fall or you can pull it back. So, right arm only, forward, left arm forward, turn, pull, boo, shoot, pull it back and catch, maybe. Swing, finish. The other, one, the other one was letting it drop and retract, catch. So right arm only, left arm, catch, turn, boom. Shoot, let it drop, right? And then pop, catch, pop, catch, swing, punt. Grab it together, step up and salute. Bang, bam. Practice that, review it, whatever. But that's just a complete routine. I hope I got some people watching me. It's kind of hard. Uh, Kenny, you, you got plenty of people watching you in here. You got uh, 37 here on Zoom, and we got uh, about 13 more on Facebook. Okay, uh, if anybody has any questions down. for Kenny Perez, you can type them in the chat now. Yes, feel free to ask that question. So Kenny, uh, since, uh, how did you get into rope dart? Like it's such a rare weapon and a lot of people want to do straight sword and broadsword and all that yeah. stuff. How did you get into this weapon? Well, you know, when I was first taking martial arts, I was like, I started when I was nine, but when I was 10, I was in the karate school. I opened up a karate magazine and there was an article of Willie Lin with his flying dragon's tooth or something. And I was like, what the heck kind of weapon is that? You know, and then I started taking Kung Fu and then I went to uh, Oakland and the Beijing team had come to do a tour and there was Master Li Jin Hong my brother shooting meteor hammer. I was like, oh my gosh, and I had to go to China. But that was one of the main things I wanted to do was learn these crazy weapons that I couldn't learn in the United States. So of course I went to learn Wushu as much as I could and thank all my teachers and everybody who helped me. But the one thing that really attracted me to want to do it was this obscure weapon, the fine dart or the rope dart or the meteor hammer. And so that was one of the first weapons I chose to learn. So as I was learning my basics and Chi Ben Gung and Tan Tui and Chu Gui Ding, I was like, oh, I want to learn this weapon here. Now you teach me. Went there, oh, please, can you teach me? Oh, master, please teach me. I always try to pick up as much rope guard as I could. That's how I did it. Nice. Uh, we do have one question. C can you show us that book that you shared at the beginning? What was the name of the book? And if we can see the cover. Soft Weapons, Nine Section Whip and Rope Dart. And the author yeah. is? Li Xingdong and Li Keqin. Keqin and Li Xingdong. Okay. Yes, same routine is in the back. Same routine I just showed you, you know. He's actually, he, he, did it in the, he worked in the Research Institute in the 80s and 90s. He graduated from the Beijing Sports University and then he worked with Master Wu Bin in the Research Institute. And so I really promote you know, anything Master Wu Bin was part of. So this is a great reference book. And now there's a reference video. If you get the book, you get the video, or if not. Hey, by the way, yeah, I do have a video too, a Rope Guard Special Edition video. 
It's about an hour and a half of some great stuff, history, application, training, all that good stuff. That's available through uh, uh, my website, Dynamic Wushu. Also, Wing Lamb Supplies, which is a great place to get all the stuff. But check them out or just search it on the web. You'll find the link to the, to the rope dart. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, that, the book is out of print. Yeah, it looks like the book is out of print, but um, hey, search for it online. Uh, we want to thank Kenny Perez again from Dynamic Martial Arts in Phoenix, Arizona for his amazing seminar sharing the art of rope dart. The video will be shared uh, both on Facebook and YouTube uh, after the sessions are over. So thank you again, Kenny Perez. Uh, it was great seeing you <laughs> and everyone else. Stay tuned. Our next presentation is by Peter Wolf. He'll be working on uh, strength training for Wushu athletes. Uh, thank you again, Kenny Prez. Yes, Wushu. <laughs> Take care. <laughs>